guys, this is the introduction to my prep week this weekend. Um, I decided to do some soup in a crock pot. It's really simple. You just kind of dump everything together. Of course, I will provide the measurements, but it's up to your tasting if you like it spicy versus non-spicy. I love spicy, but because my son was also on eating the soup, I didn't really want to put too much spice in there. And then I'm also cooking a caramelized Vietnamese uh, pork stew. I'll show you guys step by step um, the measurements and all that. So I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys soon. I just for the mess in the kitchen because I'm recording and cooking at the exact same time. So this is the lineup for the chicken tortilla soup. All this has been rinsed, cleaned, and um, put away. So I'm just going to go run down the line what we're going to be using for the soup. And then this little container is all our clean produce for our guacamole, which I'm going to show as well. So first off, we definitely need chicken broth. Um, you might need the entire carton. It just depends on me servings you're doing. And I will link everything in the description um, box of exactly the measurements, just in case you guys want to replicate this. Definitely one can of petite diced tomatoes. Prior, I used to use no salt added, but I've noticed I have to add more salt afterwards and just kind of diluted the flavor. So I'd rather have it to begin with. One um, small can of red enchiladas sauce, one lime. You're gonna use this after um, the soup is done and it's on the crock pot for four hours. So definitely afterwards. A uh, whole can of corn that I rinsed and cleaned. I'm gonna use half of that because the rest is gonna be for my son. And I normally use black beans, but I didn't feel like getting them just because I already had red kidney beans. So you can use any type of beans you like. You can even do like um, different type of corn, just depending on your preference. Um, of course, chicken breast, I already cleaned and diluted this with vinegar, water, and lime, um, just to clean off the bacteria and just rinse it really well. Red onion, even though it requires a white onion, I love red onion in my guacamole, so I'd rather just do one full onion and just repurpose it two ways versus getting two separate onions. This is all the spices you need, salt, pepper, cumin, and oregano. I only have oregano leaves, so that will do. A measuring cup, a lime squeeze, and in this particular one, I'm just gonna need one jalapeno for this. Now, since my son's gonna be eating this as well, I'm gonna take the seeds up, but I'm gonna show you guys exactly what to do. And then, of course, back here, it's all for the stuff for the guacamole. So stay tuned. All right, guys, the easy part of this is just literally dumping everything in. I just put a tablespoon of oil, um, one to two cloves of garlic, one chicken breast that's been rinsed, my veggies, which is jalapeno and red onion. The recipe calls for white onion, but I prefer red. You put the corn in, the beans, and just kind of incorporate that together and put the entire sauce of enchiladas the red sauce and then the tomatoes and what I didn't realize when I was doing all this that I used an entire can of diced tomato that didn't have any sugar in there so when I put my seasoning in the crock pot after I taste everything you want to put a little bit more than usual like I put the oregano leaves one tablespoon of that And I put a little bit of Italian seasoning. That's the kicker, even though the recipe didn't call for that, but I put that in there just for a little kick. A tablespoon of salt and half a, one fourth of pepper. In this case, I used the entire tablespoon because you gotta realize it's gonna be cooking for three to four hours. All right, guys, for the mixture of the guacamole, a lot of people like to do guacamole very smooth and no chunks at all. Me, I have a preference of chunks, I love biting into the jalapeno, guacamole, tomatoes. So in this case, I'm just seeding, taking the seeds out of the jalapenos and then just cut them into small pieces and put them in my container. I use about two to three. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put them all in that. Then for this part, I normally use like regular tomatoes, but I love grape tomatoes and I like having that crunch so i'm just kind of slicing them in half then i realized how big it was after i put everything together you can put this in you can cut them in four parts or just half size of that and just mix them together and you guys can see towards the end the guacamole is going to be a little chunky but like i say 
You can put this all together and blend it in to make it smooth consistency or just leave it as it is. It's really up to your preference. I like everything um, in chunks, you know, where you can taste the guacamole with the tomatoes, jalapenos, onions, and everything. So enjoy. All right, guys in this part all i'm really doing is taking the chicken breast out before the entire meal is cooked so you want to take the chicken breast out 30 minutes before the full uh, three hours are up you cut the chicken into slices pieces or strips whatever your preference is i'm just cutting them really down and then i'm just going to squeeze one full lime into the crock pot and just let it finish cooking for another 30 minutes All right guys, the next food prep for the week, it will be a caramelized pork stew on um, marinade Vietnamese cuisine. So very basic, very simple, but it's very time consuming. So if you're doing this for dinner, make sure you do it two hours in advance so you have it enough ready to have it for dinner. So I only got half a pound to a pound pork belly stew. It's very important that you get the pork belly versus just the regular pork, like a pork chop, you cut it up. The reason being because this is meant for stewing. So because I'm gonna be marinating this for 30 minutes, but then cooking it for two hours. So I need that. You really don't need a full bottle of coconut water. I only need three fourth cup of this, but it's all right. This is the only thing that I was able to find. So get a coconut water. 
I chopped up some two cloves of garlic and half of scallions, so or green onions, whichever people preference how they want to say it. So I got that. And your spices are just salt and pepper. So right now I'm gonna marinate that for 30 minutes. And over here, I already boiled some eggs, some brown and white eggs for 20 to 23 minutes. You let that cool down, then you're gonna peel them all together. But get this boiling while the meat is marinating. So it just be simple and then you're gonna put them together and I'm gonna show you guys that. All right guys, so the next step, you pretty much just wanna salt and pepper your meat. Um, you can go heavy handed, you can go light handed depending on your liking of the salt. However, remind you, you're gonna put fish sauce and other ingredients in there. It's gonna make it very salty. So just be mindful, just put a little bit at first and you can always add later. So I'm adding about uh, one to two tablespoons of sugar, not brown sugar, just regular sugar. I toss my green onions and my garlic into this mixture. You let it marinate for about 30 minutes. You can definitely put it longer. Um, after I put the sugar, I noticed I need a little bit more pepper because you want it to be sure that you season evenly. And then just add it to your acquired taste. All right, guys, the next step to this, you want to put oil down on your pan. You want to make over medium heat. You put one to tablespoon of sugar. The purpose of this, you want to make sure the oil turns brown, like a caramelized brown, not burnt. You just want to kind of saute them together. Once it's brown, you can't really see in this angle, but at that time it was brown. You put the meat in. You make sure it's been marinating for 30 minutes. You kind of saute them back and forth. You want to make sure you have the meat kind of halfway cooked, not completely. Just brown enough where you can see no pink or slightly pink to your liking. And then once I do that, once the egg is done, after it's been peeled, cooled down, then I'm going to dump them at the end and you're going to see me mixing that together. Right, guys so it's everything's burning really nicely so you want to kind of turn it down to medium heat still and then just kind of submerge halfway to the water where the meat is not completely covered and put the lid on and let it come to a boil all right guys so this is the finishing product of the soup so i'm not going to dip my spoon in there because i'm going to add my guacamole my sour cream and my cheese it's really up to your preference so it was in the crock pot so it's still hot i'm going to add a scoop or two to, to soup. And then I'm going to use another spoon for the sour cream. Again, it's your preference how you like your soup. I like slightly but not too much of sour cream. Just maybe a, a scoop and a half. And then, if I can open the cheese. And then I always use Mexican blend. You can use chopped cheddar, but I'm trying to keep a theme here. But you just adding the cheese right into the soup and that's your chicken tortilla soup all right guys so it, now it is boiling this is a optional preference but i really highly recommend it um you're gonna add it requires a half a cup of fish sauce but i'm gonna only use one third just because my son is eating this as well and i don't want to put too much of it so you're just gonna pour it in while it's boiling I'm gonna mix it all up. Don't move around too much. So you wanna break up the eggs or the meat. Okay. Sorry, the kitchen's a little bit messy. So the fish sauce that I use is this one here, which is a Thai kitchen premium fish sauce, all purpose sauce. So um, if you wanna get the authentic Fish sauce, you're more than welcome to. I wasn't able to get one, so I just got this from Kroger. And I don't really go through fish sauce like that, so I only got a small cup. I'm sorry, small bottle. So after you're done putting the fish sauce on, you wanna turn the, the heat down to low simmer. 
and then marinate that for two hours. I'm sorry, not marinate, simmer for two hours. All right, guys, so pretty much this is the soup. Um, I served some to my son and myself, but because I was thinking of him, I didn't put too much spice in it. But I realized with all the um, tomatoes, it needed a little bit more seasoning. So I just add two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. Now, if you don't have oregano, you can definitely sub it too with Italian seasoning. It, it actually gives you a little kick, but I put a little bit of both. Because again, I didn't go crazy because my son is tasting this soup too. But if it's for you, your family who's okay with spice, definitely go crazy and use this. Um, make sure once it's done, taste it first to see if you like it. And then you add um, whatever you need. But when you put your guacamole and your sour cream and cheese, it will definitely intense the flavor. While I'm waiting for this to cook for two hours, you can definitely serve this over steamed rice or fire rice. But definitely over steamed rice, you can pour this uh, juice over it and it tastes all good. Until next time, you guys.